Eleanor, does the Abbey possess an art that can control demons? Not that I've ever heard of. Besides, if they could control demons, there'd be no need to resurrect Enominot, would there? Can't argue with that. But Melchior was obviously in control of that demon. How did he manage that? You can't tether them like a Moloch, and Melchior wasn't using oaths or mana to compel him. No, this was something more like mind control. Mind control? Let's say you know your target's innermost desires. You simply conjure the right illusion. Show them what would push their buttons in just the right way. Ah, if you can create an illusion of something someone really wants, you can control them. Exactly. You can force a powerful burden upon your target's psyche. Until their spirit breaks, that is. What happens when they break? Depends on the target. They might become an empty shell, they might go wild with desire. Eeny teeny spiny crow. You sure know a lot about this. Now that you put it that way, why would I know so much about it? <gasps> what if someone is controlling me, making me say these very words? How horrifying! I believe I'll take your words with a grain of salt. Hmm. Welcome back. Did you find the Therian? Yeah. We're bringing these two back to Titania. Dogs? Look, lizards, no problem. Walking hunks of armor I can deal with, but dogs? On my ship? You're not a dog person. I was, uh, bit by one when I was a kid. Then you've got nothing to worry about. If they're biting anyone on this ship, it'll be me. Uh, are you okay, Velvet? Oh, sure. They're just dogs. No, I mean, in general. <sighs> Fine, they can come aboard. I'll take us back to Titania. We have to take good care of Orthy and Russ. That's on you. They won't let me near. Ah. Uh, yeah, well, what do you expect? You only killed their master. Don't worry. I'll take responsibility. You mustn't! They're quite vicious, you know! I just asked them if they wanted to be friends, and they suddenly bit me! I'm sure you said something to irritate them, like, I'll make you my minions! You had it coming. She... she knows. But you have Therians to find, Lafayette. You won't be able to look after them all the time. I suppose... what should I do? You could ask Kamoana and Medissa. Kamoana said she once had a dog. Even if they get a little rowdy, Medissa will be around to keep them safe. That's a good idea. I'll go ask them. Thanks. We can't be killing off Therians. Besides, they remind me of Nico. Velvet. You want a pet dog, Luffy said? You should go to the Abbey then. Why the Abbey? Because the place is full of the Shepherd's lap dogs. <laughs> get it? Lap dogs! Yeah, I get it. Ha 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 ha. I devoured them again. No, don't. So, you said your little brother made this copy. He could read the ancient tongue. That's amazing. <laughs> Luffy was different from most other kids. He read books a lot because his body was so weak. He studied all the time, so that he could be ready to travel the world one day. 
which was kind of funny, considering he'd hide in my bed whenever he had a nightmare. Really? But I don't care that he got scared. I just wanted him to live. That's why I have to... Velvet! I'll devour as much as it takes. I will have vengeance. Velvet! Done. The art is attuned to you. Thank you. This time I'll make sure to finish what I set out to do. I've gotta say, I didn't think you had it in you, Oscar. I don't believe I asked for your opinion. Lord Artorius! Go back outside, Teresa. We'll see you when we're done. Are the rumors true? Are you using that experimental art on Oscar? It is true. I was under the impression it was still incomplete, sir. Yep, there's still a potentially fatal weakness for its channeler. We've taken the theory as far as it will go. The next step is to learn its control and actual practice. Don't tell me you intend to test it against that Therian! Please, let me do it. I should be the one, not him! You are not strong enough. Th then at least let me back him up! So you can take the enemy out before Oscar uses the art? A noble plan, but I'm afraid it'd mess everything up. It was my idea to volunteer, sister. I failed at Titania, and allowed the Therian to be stolen from Palamedes. I need to atone for my mistakes. Then let me come with you. I have different orders for you. Teresa Linares, you are hereby relieved of your duties as an exorcist, and are to return your Moloch. Relieved of duty? Why? For our plans to be realized, we require an especially strong Malak. We've analyzed your Malak's dormant abilities, and he is of considerable power, on the same level as the young Malak who betrayed us for the enemy. Simply put, you just don't got what it takes to handle him, sweetheart. This is all over. I'd love to have some of your homemade cooking again, sister. I could go for that quiche you used to make. How can you talk of that right now? Lord Artorius. I know what you're going to ask. Yes, Oscar, when you fulfill your mission, I will make Teresa an exorcist again. Oscar. Are you doing this for... Don't worry about me. I'd go to the ends of the earth and back for a plate of your delicious quiche. What should I do if I don't do 
something, he'll... Huh? What's this? I'm... receptive? To that art? And to you? Uh, where am I? Take it easy, Velvet. You've been out for three days. Then that's three days wasted. What's the situation? Well, let's see. For one thing, Grimoire's been deciphering that ancient book. She says that this new copy is complete. All the pages we were missing are there. As for the dogs, Kamawana's taken a real shine to them. All right then. Now we just need to find that last Therian. Velvet, no! I said take it easy. Seriously. Oh, hold on. Have you not had anything to eat? Um, well, I just thought, since you hadn't either... Are you serious? Why would you do a full thing like that? You'll die if you don't eat. Actually, I... He won't die if he doesn't eat. Malakim don't actually depend on food for sustenance. If they do eat, it's only as a quirky hobby. All right, if you're sure. If you feel like going hungry, it's your life. But there's no sense in doing it on my account. Huh. <sighs> Good to see you're feeling better again. As you probably noticed, we made it back to Titania already. Sorry to keep you all waiting on me. Get everyone together. We meet now. <sighs> well, that could have gone better. I just... wanted to better understand the hardships Velvet's suffering through. It seems unfair for her to bear all of it alone. Hmm. Well, she's... how can I put it? A very straightforward kind of person. But nothing gets under her skin like a clumsy display of sympathy. What should I do about her then? For now, just get something in your tummy. Any good warrior knows you eat when you have the chance. Even Malakim have more strength on a full stomach than an empty one, don't they? Yeah. It's true. Food will fill an empty stomach. But what is there to fill an empty heart, I wonder? Time for some grub, Lafayette. What are you hungry for? Hmm. I'll have some stuffed giant squid. Or prison crab dumplings. Or sea snake bowl! It's your first meal in three days, right? Better stick with something mild or you'll be sorry. How about a risotto or a vegetable rice soup? That could be nice. I could go for some borscht or shark fin and egg soup. For dessert, I'll have a sweet bean and jelly fruit cup, a giant parfait, and a triple berry cake. Zip it, Mogilu. Oh well, I'm getting full just thinking about it. I think I'd like some rice porridge with a pickled plum and baby sardines on top. Ooh, an austere choice. And an apple. In that case, you should have some apple boo. Apple boo? What on earth is that? It's just grated apples. But when my brother wasn't feeling well, I often fed it to him. I think I'd like to try some. If you insist, I'll make some for you. At least it's something I can make without needing to taste it. Okay. I insist. Okay. If you're already making some, I'd like- Zip it, Mogilu! Okay, Fee, I need you to find us our next Earth Pulse Point. I found one, but it's really, really far, way up in the northeast. Hmm. If it's that far out, it has to be an Engand. Engand is a collection of small islands. There's a comparatively bigger one called Lionel Island, but that's the exception. Yeah, I think the Earth Pulse Point's probably out there. And Gand, huh? Those waters are haunted by ghost ships, you know. Ghost ships? Yep. 
Legend has it they snatch up wrongdoers who bear lingering regrets and whisk them away to that eternal voyage. That doesn't sound promising. Currents from all over the world converge in Engen's waters, so a lot of shipwrecks from distant seas end up there as their final resting place. Uh-huh. Ah. So that's where the stories of ghost ships come from. Boo. You guys have no imagination. I'd rather they stay imaginary myself. We should still be careful. We'll be fine. Ghost ship, exorcist, whatever comes along. We'll be the ones to administer their last rites. Just one Therian to go. When I escaped, Ceres told me that Artorius could still be killed. That means she must have known everything. That Enominot is incomplete. How Therians work. But why did she betray Artorius? Why did she give me her strength? I know that try as you might, some fires can never fully be extinguished. But what made you go so far as to feed yourself to me? Tell me, why did you do it, sis? Oh, what am I saying? Ceres was a Moloch. Just a Moloch. Just focus on what has to be done. Once the Therians are all together, I can end this. That's all that matters. That's all I need to think about. It's not. You have to do it right. You're so mean, Medissa. If you keep telling me what to do, I'll hate you. Fine. Hate me then. So long as you do what I say. Fine? Uh, I love you, Medissa, and you don't even care. Uh, what's going on here? Eleanor, Medissa's being mean. She keeps telling me to dry my hair after my bath, but I don't wanna. What? Is that all you're arguing about? This is important. Just because she's a Therian doesn't mean she can't catch a cold. But I won't! I won't catch a cold! I swear! I don't want to take Mom's yucky, awful medicine, so I'm not gonna get sick. If you insist on being so stubborn, we can do this the hard way. There's no need for everyone to get so worked up. Her hair's pretty much dry already, right? Yeah, what she said! I'm spoiling her, aren't I? Seriously. Look, we don't even know what would happen if Etherian catches a cold, let alone how to treat it. That's true. But look, I get it. I know you feel responsible for her. You mean, what happened to her mother? Yeah. Lafayette said told me about it. My, my! Look who's a little tattletale! I'm sorry. But I thought Medissa should know. Just in case. It's fine, I suppose. I should have told her myself. Well, at least I understand everything now. It's all too tragic for words. Yes. And the knowledge would not be something that a young child could possibly bear. I'm not planning on telling her. That's probably your only option. But do you really think you can keep lying to her forever? I have to. For her own sake. For her, huh? All right. I'll go with you on this. You two are going through an awful lot of trouble for a selfish kid. All kids are selfish. They're selfish. But that's what their families and their mothers should be there for. Don't you have any memories like that yourself? Sorry, but I'd rather just keep them to myself. Pish and Piffle. Everybody and their issues, am I right?
We're coming up on Lionel Island. So much for the ghost ships. Should we expect another welcome party waiting for us again? No. I had the Blood Wings spread a rumor that we were raiding an Abbey compound far, far from here. As far as plans go, that's better than nothing. <laughs> All this cloak and dagger. Give me a good old frontal assault any day. First mate, sir. There's a ship drifting ahead of us. A ghost ship? It's an Abbey ship. Their flag. It's a distress signal. Understood. Commence approach. Are you actually going to help an enemy ship? A ship signaling distress has neither allies nor enemies. That's a code all seafarers abide by. It's an obvious trap. Not even pirates would use a distress signal for a surprise attack. Of course, after we rescue a ship, we still strip them of everything they've got. Anyway, if it's a trap, we'll kill everyone on board. Simple. <sighs> a waste of time if you ask me. Benwick, do we still have any Salatoma left? Yes, sir. If this is their full crew, we should have enough on board to treat them. Now that you mention it, don't Abbey ships usually have a bigger crew? These were all who were aboard when I hijacked the ship and made them set sail. Teresa! I knew I was being reckless. But I never expected we'd run afoul of the Corsair's Scourge. But you know, I'm glad we did. Since it brought me to you. You seriously plan to fight in that condition? No, no. I know you've won this one. Use me as you will. Use you? Don't bother asking. It's a trap. Lionel Island is where you'll find Dees. Hatharian. My brother Oscar is guarding over it. We can handle him just fine. You should know that Oscar's acquired a powerful new art. Its formula developed by Lord Melchior. The art heightens a Moloch's power far beyond its normal limits. The effect is incredible. Normal arts don't even compare. Even were you to win, you wouldn't come away unscathed. Why are you telling us this? The art is still untested and imperfect. There's no guarantee its caster will survive the effects. I don't want anything to happen to Oscar. If I'm your hostage, Oscar won't move against you. This will afford you a window to snatch the Therian and make your escape. You're willing to betray the Abbey? There's nothing in this world that could ever replace Oscar. <sighs> I know you can't trust me. So don't give me your medicine. I'll place my life in your hands. Just save Oscar. Lady Teresa! If true, this information will be of use to us. For now, let's bring her aboard and give her the medicine. So, you're going to believe her story? An art that boosts a Moloch's power far beyond its normal limits. Sounds like we might be in for a real fight. And she said that Melchior developed it, too. Maybe this explains why he was so intent on acquiring that Siegfried relic. If this is all true, a frontal assault might not be the best idea. But why do you think Teresa is willing to go so far to protect Oscar? 
Oscar is the second son of the Dragonia family, aristocrats with ancestral ties to the Asgard royal lineage. From what I understand, he was sent to the Abbey in the hopes of strengthening his family's ties to the group. For the good of the bloodline. Happens all the time. Teresa followed him to the Abbey, where she's been his constant savior, even if she's kept it from him. So she's another noble too. Could have had an easy life if she just kept in her place. No. Teresa was conceived... uh, outside of formal matrimony. And her mother... was not of what you'd call high standing. It happens more often than you might think. My mother died, and my father's wife never cared for me. So I merely served the Dragonia family as a maid. Those were dark, lonely times for me. But Oscar... Oscar was the only one who called me his sister, and embraced me as family. Does a sister need any other reason to want to save her brother? So you're back on your feet. My sincere thanks for the medicine. I can't use you as a hostage if you're dead. Where's the Therian? Ahead through the Baird Marsh are the ruins of an ancient kingdom. There you'll find the Earth Pulse Point, along with Oscar. Um, what happened at number one? Lord Artorius took number one away from me. As it stands, I'm without the powers of an exorcist. As such, whether I live or die is for you people to decide. Once Oscar is safe, you can do whatever you like to me. We'll do as you wish. All of it. I know you know this, Fee, but don't let your guard down for one second. I won't. Teresa, it's been a while. We haven't seen each other since the throne. But that doesn't seem like so long ago to me. Not when I keep hearing so much about you. Eleanor Hume, the traitor. What of the Corsair Scourge? Nothing to worry about. I've had my dose of Salatoma. Was it as bad as you remembered it? Brings you back to when you were an initiate, doesn't it? Why did you betray us, Eleanor? When the Abbey made you a patrolling inspector, they placed great responsibility upon you. Oscar should have been the one to take on that role. He had already been selected for it. But you wanted it so very badly, and that sweet, naive man that he is, he let you take it. I had no idea. Oscar had already been chosen? Yes, and after he passed on it, he was stationed on that dangerous island where he sustained that awful wound. And now, you accompany the monster that nearly killed him. I feel I have a right to some answers. My desire to save humanity has not changed. I have simply found a path different from the Abbey's. I don't find that answer acceptable. I didn't think that you would. I know very well that you offer no compromises when it comes to Oscar. You're right. I don't. Be sure to inform your new friends of that fact. In order for me to protect Oscar, I'm going to need you all to trust me. That's all I have to say to you. I understand. I heard that they used this island to hold exiled prisoners. Just looking at this place depresses me. I hate it here. We can't go carelessly wandering about. This place is dangerous. I know, I know. Still, from the looks of those ruins, there used to be one impressive civilization here. I can practically taste the hidden treasure. The punishment for tomb raiding is quite strict, you know. Think I'd be a pirate if I was afraid of the Abbey? I won't stop you from looking for loot. But if you get into trouble, don't expect us to save you. Got it? Aye aye, sir. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Power number two displayed at the throne. Hard to believe he had that hidden in him. Lord Melchior said that number one was full of untapped potential as well. If I have the talent to use it. Uh, Teresa, my lady, you seem angry. Me? At what? At me, for running away and joining Velvet. Oh, that? I was careless. An enemy stole a tool of mine. I'm merely frustrated at my own incompetence. A tool. I don't care what happens to me now. Not as long as I can save Oscar. I'm the one who hurt your precious brother. And you're asking for my help now? Yes, you hurt him. You scarred his face, and his honor, and his heart. Still holding a grudge then? Well, at least you won't be able to kill me in my sleep. With no Malakim, I'm an ordinary woman. How could I threaten the Lord of Calamity? 
I'm painfully aware of my own weakness. Good. Try to keep out of the way, then. Lady Teresa, Velvet isn't so different from you. She had a little brother, she... I know all about the Lord of Calamity, but none of that matters to me. As powerless as I am now, this is the only path for me. It's the only way I can save Oscar. Lady Teresa...
Malachim are just tools. What are you brooding over? I know! Velvet, Eleanor, or Teresa? You're not sure whose little brother you want to be, eh? In that case, I assure you I'm the kindest of the lot. The cruelest, most devious. That's not what's on my mind. There's something I need to say to Lady Teresa. Something you wish to say? Then speak, number two. That's just it. I'm not number two. I'm... I'm Lafayette. Lafayette? It's the name Velvet gave me. It's very important to me. Something can be important to you? Yes. I have feelings. You see, Malakim are not tools. Very well. I shall call you Lafayette from now on. Thank you, Lady Teresa. You're kinder than you look, my dear Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. You misunderstand. With so much at stake, I don't want to rock the boat. Velvet, tell me what you know about Teresa and Oscar. I want a clear picture of what they can do. All right. Teresa and Oscar are... I can give you the lowdown on everything, Abby! Lady Teresa and Oscar are the best of the best, even among the Praetors. Some call them the Consuls. There are only around a hundred Praetors in the world, so we're talking very elite. Anyone called a Consul is going to be adept at both fighting and leadership. They are key figures entrusted with responsibility for major cities and institutions. The fighting part is all we have to worry about. Are they better than you, Eleanor? Yes. I was a Primus, which is a full rank below them. I could never overcome Teresa's arts or Oscar's swordsmanship in our practice battles. When they were still trainees, they worked together to wipe out dozens of demons in a single night! After that, Lord Melchior kept a close eye on them. Appreciated. I'll be on my guard. Together they sound like a real threat. Thankfully, we're only after Oscar alone. But Oscar has mastered a new art developed by Lord Melchior! You can count on it being a nasty one. You really do know a lot about this stuff. It's a little suspicious. You... you think so? Well, I was at the Abbey, so... Why don't you call him Lord Oscar? That's what's bothering you? It's because we're both so popular with the ladies. I consider him a rival.
we were done for. It's a beetle. Yeah, uh, a Lionel Giant Thunderstag beetle, to be exact. Why do they always have such awkward names? I, I think it's a cool name. <sighs> I've never been able to figure out why boys are so drawn to these things. What's the matter? Didn't you want to see it? Uh, yeah. Thanks. When he was little, Oscar was always running around the woods collecting bugs. He'd get so into it, it was never long before he'd trip and hurt himself. Did you grab bugs for him? Yes, I thought they were gross. But I was much taller than him, and I had the reach. Once, he gave me a whole pile of cicada shells as his way of thanking me. I just screamed. I'm sure he just wanted you to know how he felt. I can relate to that. Rather unusual for a Moloch like you to contemplate such things. Well, I try to. It's just... Really hard sometimes. It's hard for people too. Sometimes it feels insurmountable. And yet we can't give up. Sometimes you just have to say what you believe in your heart. Even if you're not good at saying it. What I believe. V, hurry up already! What were you two talking about? Nothing. Are we ready for this?
stop fooling around. But I'm serious about my fooling around. Hey, Lafayette. Found a new stag beetle, did you? Yeah. Lady Teresa caught it for me. Ooh, those pincers are sharp. Eisen, take a look at this fine specimen of a stag. Wait, I believe that might be a two-horned rhinoceros beetle. Listen, you two. If you're gonna get in another fight over this, I'll just say it's a new type of drone beetle. You wouldn't. You've really figured us out, huh? <laughs> Eleanor, you didn't make him say that just now, did you? I did not. I've made a pact with him as a vessel, but he isn't tethered to me. A Moloch, acting so human. I used to think that way. Malachim possessing free will just like humans? It was inconceivable. But meeting Lafayette and Aizen taught me the truth. They laugh in joyful times and cry in sad times. Their stomachs even growl too. Their stomachs growl? Now I take it as a matter of course that not only Malachim, but demons and Therians too, have their own thoughts and feelings. I thought you hated demons. I certainly still do, but now I feel something besides just hate. Malachim with free will? Demons and Therians as well? You must have sensed that in Lafayette, said, or you wouldn't have caught that beetle for him. When you saw his beaming face, it must have reminded you of when Oscar was a young boy. Am I correct? This conversation's over. Teresa, be honest. Isn't there something wrong with the Abbey using a dangerous experimental art out in the field? Oscar's the one who decided to go through with it. Don't presume to know anything about who he is. Using that art could be fatal. I can't allow Oscar to try it. Lady Teresa, is something the matter? It's nothing. I'm fine. But you looked like you were in pain. Oh. I was just thinking a bit. You didn't have time to rest after recovering from the Corsair's scourge. You're awfully hard on yourself, you know. And even harder on others, am I? Th that's not what I meant. It doesn't matter. I'm well aware that I'm stone cold. But they say a Moloch never knows his vessel's heart. I said nothing all those times you snuck off to the library, did I? You knew about that? Of course I knew. But I was just letting you roam free like a master might let her little pup. Number one didn't wander about like you did. What makes you different? I'm sorry. Well, boys will be boys, I guess. But I was planning on punishing you if that behavior continued. Punish me how? You don't want to know. It might wreck your good cheer. Lady Teresa! <laughs> Look at how open she's being. Do you really think she'll work with us? I don't think she's lying to us. But I don't think she's being entirely truthful either. Look, I know I probably don't have to say this, but... You don't. I won't let my guard down. If I see anything funny, she's dead. And since she has no Moloch... It'll be quick.
Teresa, let's review our plan before we go in. All right. We'll tell Oscar that we'll release you if he gives up his weapons and Malachim. We'll tie him up, collect the Therian, and then head for the docks. Once we're aboard our ship and ready to sail, we'll release you. You'll be free to do whatever you want. Very well. But I want you to promise me one thing. Promise me you won't hurt Oscar. That depends on him. I'll defend myself if I have to. Um, Velvet... Please, do it for me, too. If you want to save Oscar, you need to make him listen. Put your own life on the line. You're his sister. Do whatever you have to to protect him. I will. Even if it means my death.
getting warmed up. We're almost at the Earth Pulse Point. You all know the plan, right? I'm using you as a hostage to keep Oscar from doing anything stupid. And don't you try anything funny either. <laughs> Thank you. 
I knew you'd come, Velvet. Sister! As plain as day. Now put down your sword and let go of my fairy. If you don't, I'll kill her. You coward! I'm sorry to do this, Oscar! I'm searching for the truth behind the Abbey's talk of so-called reason. And your idea of reason is to threaten my dear sister's life? I'm sorry, Oscar. I've become nothing but a burden. Teresa, no. It's not like that. All right. I'll put down my arms. Teresa, get back! Forgive me, Oscar. This is the only way I can protect you. We've kept our end of the bargain. Take him and get out of here. I can't do that. It will reflect poorly upon him. Lady Teresa? Have you forgotten? You're just a powerless human. You're right. I am a weak, worthless human. But he has shown me the light, and it shines. My body is receptive to Inominat's power. And with it, I can protect everything I care about! She turned into Etherian? No, she fused with it. I'll kill you all! Anything to protect Oscar! Merging with the barrier. Do you realize what you're doing, Teresa? <laughs> A trivial sacrifice. I'd do anything for my Oscar. Dragon Falcon! Here, please! You found me! Here's your justice! Provide an order! Right there! Grimble!
I can't lose. Not here. Look, Lady Teresa. Stand down, or I'll devour you piece by piece. <laughs> It's okay, sister. You've done enough. No, don't look at me. I'm so hideous. When I was growing up, the only one my mother and father ever paid any attention to was my older brother, the heir. But you, Teresa, you noticed me when they didn't. You looked after me, supported me, smiled for me. I could never thank you enough, my sister. <laughs> oh, Oscar. Now, keep watching over me, Teresa. As long as you're looking after me, I can vanquish even the Lord of Demons. Take a good look! This is armatization!
My sister. He's losing control of the Moloch! Oh, damn it! It's turning into a dragon! Velvet, quick! Devour that thing! Stop! He's still... for my birthday. They're family heirlooms that were supposed to go to his fiancée, but he didn't know that at the time. I told him he should give them to the woman he cares most about in the world, and you know what he did? He smiled at me and said I was that woman. So sweet, so innocent, and you took him away! You killed my Oscar! How could you? How could you? How could you? Teresa, Oscar. <sighs> and we didn't even get the Therian we came for. He... Oscar came at him first. I had to. It was for Luffy. For my little...
They're dead. No, not just dead. I killed them. I'm the same as Artorias. I killed her brother before her very eyes. It's not the same. It is the same! But I didn't have any choice! It was the only way to avenge you! It was all for you! I did it for you! There's nowhere left to run. Nowhere for you or for me. You all right? I ate too much. That's all. They... they were close. They supported each other ever since they were children. I just did to them what they were going to do to us. And who will killing them save? The soul of my murdered brother. <gasps> oh. Whatever the case, we messed up the Therian part of the plan. They're probably making a new one as we speak. There's no time to waste. Let's go back to the port and start our search. Yeah. I... had to do it. All of it. Velvet! Scout ship setting sail. that Velvet would actually eat Teresa. What else could she do? We never expected that Teresa would be a Therian either. Velvet and Lady Teresa weren't so different. They both loved their brothers. Not everyone loves their brothers. Some just want them dead. <sighs> so where does this leave us? It seems we must search for the new Therian that will fill the void left by Teresa. It won't be easy to find another who could become a Therian. Hmm. Then it won't be easy for the Abbey either. And they still may not be able to awaken an Ominat. We still can't assume that we're in the clear, though. No, we can't. If it takes time for the Therian to be reborn, this could be our chance to strike. Whatever happened, the seven Therian's ties have been severed from Inominat. But we won't know if the Empyrean has been weakened until we find out for ourselves. I can try and see if I can sense the new Therian. So let's go back to the prison island first. But I think... Velvet needs time to rest. Right. If we're gonna take down Artorius, she has to be there with us. Yeah.
First mate, there's trouble. We got an emergency message from Port Zexen. A ship carrying dozens of exorcists just set sail for Titania. They have orders to eliminate the Lord of Calamity. Yeesh. Looks like the hideout's not so hidden after all. It wasn't me! I didn't tell them anything! Then you won't have any problem helping us. We're rescuing the Therians. Of course not! I won't let them take Kamoana again. Wait. That information came from the Bloodwings? No, from a peddler I often do business with. Exorcist operations like this are usually kept a closely guarded secret. And you're telling me a regular civilian knew about it? You think it's a trap? Trap or not, we don't have a choice. Our enemies know the odds. If they've set a trap for us, that means they think they can win. The Armatus! Yes, they're likely to throw armatized exorcists at us. Even your demon arm can't eat Armati. You might just have a real problem on your hands. If I can't devour them, then we kill them. Yeah, if we overcome the Armati, we can win. Like with Oscar. But his Armatus was still incomplete. From what I could gather, if the Exorcist remains Armatized for too long, their Moloch will turn into a dragon. But to prevent these dragons from running wild, Melchior embedded a self-destruction art in both Exorcist and Moloch. To think they would go that far. Uh, this is all just conjecture, of course, but we should prepare ourselves as best we can. Just make sure not to leave any regrets behind. Hmm. <laughs> I really can't fathom what the Abbey is doing. Even if they did let us know on purpose, why would they leave us be? 
I would have expected them to press the attack against us. Even if their aim is to capture our allies as some kind of leverage against us, their plan is too many holes. What if we decided to abandon Kamuana and the others? They'd be no closer to capturing Velvet. Do they actually want the Therians back? What are you saying? Why did Melchior place that illusion on a ball to lure Velvet in? That was so he could capture her, right? And in case he couldn't capture her, he could kill her and create another Therian. Okay, so if securing the Therians is so important to them, why would they throw Orthrus to the winds? That's a puzzler. Melchior was right there, and he didn't try to protect Orthrus at all. I don't understand it. It's like they're toying with us. I don't see any point in that either. They must know we won't give up. Actually, that could be close to the mark. What if they're just trying to rattle us? Everything would fit, including the assault on Titania. Whatever's going on, I don't think we're going to like it. So, Eleanor, about that Armatus Oscar used, was that something the Abbey has been working on for a while? I was never involved in weapons development or anything like that, but I did hear of a secret research division. Word was that they were deciphering ancient scrolls and books coming from every corner of the Empire. Apparently, Teresa knew something of the ancient tongue, and they called her in to help from time to time. Did she work on Enominot's book? I was never privy to any of the details, but I think the books were mostly about controlling Malachim. Well, that Siegfried thing of Zavid's is some kind of power control device, right? The Abbey probably learned about Siegfried in one of those books, and realized they could use it to armatize. So Melchior tracked Zavid down and stole the formula. Makes sense. It was all so they could create the Armatus. Will Eifried be alright? Complete or not, they've seen that they can use the Armatus in battle. They have no use for him anymore. <sighs> Let's get back to Titania, Aizen. I'll help out with the ship. Right. Let's set sail. <laughs>